Hello everyone, I'm Clay Jones and this is the first video in an eight-part series entitled Seven Truths to Remember When Suffering Strikes. Today we're going to just talk, make, I'm going to make a few introductory comments and then we're going to talk about the ironic nature of conquering. You know, at the outset, let me say that before suffering strikes you, we all need to be abiding in God's Word. Obviously, we need to be abiding in God's Word when suffering does strike us, but even before then, because we need to be prepared, and you're not going to be prepared to deal with suffering if you're not abiding in God's Word. Everybody likes the statement, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Jesus said that. The first part of what he said, though, was, if you abide in my word, then you really are my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Uh, we need to be in his word and have it in us so that when suffering does strike us, we'll be prepared. Otherwise, you, well, you may be forced into abiding into his word when suffering strikes, if you haven't already, because you're going, that's where the answers are. Uh, by the way, a word about my health. Uh, 14 months ago, I was diagnosed with AFib atrial fibrillation, uh, and that's just where your heart beats erratically. Thankfully, drugs are taking care of that. And then 12 months ago, uh, I was diagnosed with having metastasized cancer. Wow, uh, that was quite a bit. Uh, I'm getting treatment for that. Your prayers are appreciated. I'm not in any pain, uh, but I've got a lot, got quite a road to hoe uh, up, up there uh, be because of this. Um, the principles that I'm going to be discussing with you are things that Jeannie and I have found to be extremely helpful in dealing with the news that we got, like having metastasized cancer, uh, very meaningful to us. And they've been extremely helpful, and I think you'll find them helpful too. So that's enough for a few introductory comments. I'll talk more about my health situation in some other videos, uh, but that's enough for now. Uh, G.K. Beale coined the term the ironic nature of conquering or the ironic nature of overcoming. And the question is, how do we be victorious and conquer in suffering? Because we can. Uh, but in the way we do it is, look, we're going to look to Jesus first. And what, what was said about Jesus in Revelation chapter 5, John says in Revelation chapter 5, verse 1 through 3, Then I saw on the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll, with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, who's worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. And then John says something, well, very personal. In Revelation chapter 5, verses 4 and 5, the next verses, he says, I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. You'll notice that I emphasized the words, The lion of the tribe of Judah has conquered. Uh, and then what does John see next? This is as important as it is shocking. It's almost shocking. So the lion of the tribe of Judah has conquered. Next thing John says in Revelation 4, 6, Then I saw a lamb, looking as if it had been slain, standing at the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. So the lion of the tribe of Judah is conquered, and John says, and what did he see? A lamb looking like it had been slain. He saw a slaughtered lamb. Uh, notice that Jesus, the slaughtered lamb, conquered. When did Jesus conquer? When did the lion of the tribe of Judah conquer? When he was tortured to death on the cross, he conquered. That's when he conquered. Uh, by the way, I'm going to talk a lot about conquering in the weeks to come, and the videos to come. And the word conquering is, is the root word Nike, N-I-K-E, where Nike tennis shoes gets its name. Uh, and it's translated in your various Bibles differently. Some translate it conquered, others translate it triumphed, others translate it as is victorious. But either way, all the way, it's, it's the Greek word Nike, as I said, where Nike tennis shoes gets its name. So the lion of the tribe of Judah had conquered, he'd overcome, he triumphed. 
Now, I want to take us to a related passage in Romans, and the connection between these two is amazing. In Romans chapter 8, verses 35 and 36, uh, uh, Paul wrote, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship, persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? He says, and let's think about these words real quick. For trouble or hardship, that could be anything, right? Any hard thing you're going through. It could be heart disease or cancer. Uh, by the way, the Bible doesn't promise that you won't die of heart disease or cancer. In fact, you probably will because that's the way most people die. Uh, but, you know, the Lord, we can conquer through those things. I'll talk about that more in a moment. And then it uses the words persecution or famine. Well, you know what those are, obviously. Then it says nakedness, danger, or sword. Wow. Uh, and here's something I don't think we want to hear, but it's true. And we need to examine these hard truths in advance. The Lord does not promise that you will not, or I, will not be stripped naked, raped, and tortured to death. The Lord doesn't promise that. There's nowhere in the Bible that it promises that. In fact, uh, that's happened to Christians throughout the centuries. It's certainly happened to some Christians in the last year, especially in a country like Afghanistan. Uh, and and I just I think Christians have got to no no he just wants us to have a good time he he's he does actually want us to have some good times after all he created all the pleasures he does want that but we need to be aware of what the Bible doesn't promise and what the Bible doesn't promise is that we won't die of cancer heart disease or even being uh, like I say stripped naked raped or tortured to death the Bible doesn't promise that and so anyway so he says what's going to separate us from the love of Christ. Uh, again, it says, shall trouble or hardship, persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword. <clears throat> but then in the next verse, he says, in verse 36, as it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as, listen to this, sheep to be slaughtered. Remember how Jesus was the, the slaughtered lamb that conquered? And now the world looks at us as sheep to be slaughtered especially in countries where there's immense persecution and against Christianity, like in the Middle of East, uh, East we're like sheep to be slaughtered. Uh, did you get that? Uh, it goes again, I saw a lamb looking as if it had been slain. Then it says, we are sheep, considered to be sheep to be slaughtered. But then Paul tells us something amazing. He says, all these troubles, and then we're considered as sheep to be slaughtered. But then in verses 37 to 39, he says, no, in... And notice how I emphasize that. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. We are super conquerors. We are hypo conquerors. In fact, it's uh, the word is huponike uh, for super conqueror. We are super conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height or depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is ours in Christ Jesus. So we can be conquerors again in these things, not by going around them. And I think too many Christians go, no, no, God just wants us to be happy. No, he wants us to grow up. He wants us to be mature. He wants us to become super conquerors. And he has many blessings in store for us. And we're going to talk about those in the videos to come. But he wants us to be conquerors now. Um, uh, Jesus conquered by giving his life and allowing himself to be tortured to death and honoring God through it. And when you honor God, when you and I, when we honor God through suffering, we conquer. Uh, when did, you know, when, how did Jeannie and I conquer when we found out recently, 12 months ago, that I had metastasized cancer, uh, cancer in my uh, spinal cord and in my lungs and uh, in my liver. Uh, and yes, they're treating that in various ways. Thank you, Jesus, for that. But how we find out, it's weird because they released the medical report, uh, the, the result of my PET scan to us via email. And so here it was like 10 o'clock at night and we're reading this thing and going, oh, wow. <laughs> and tears streaming down our faces. But you know what we did when, with tears streaming down our faces? I led us in a prayer of thanksgiving to God. Jeannie prayed and thanked God. We obviously asked for healing. We asked for help. But we also, like I say, with tears streaming down our faces, prayed to God and thanked him, thanked him for allowing this to come upon us. And we knew at that moment 
that we'd conquered Satan in the heavenly places. We knew by honoring God through that that we were conquerors. This is not Stoicism, by the way. As I said, tears were streaming down our faces. That's against Stoicism. I'm not saying it didn't hurt. Of course it hurt. But in the midst of it, we honored God through it. And you can too. Thank you for joining me. Uh, it, the next video in this series, Seven Truths to Remember When Suffering Strikes, we're going to talk about truth number one. God loves us. And you'll hear how Jeannie and I uh, talk about God loving us in the next video. I look forward to talking to you then. Goodbye.